Happy Easter, everyone. With it being Easter, there's no better time than to cover Easter eggs developers implemented into their games. These can range from secret modes, to new dialogue, to even throwbacks at other IPs. For today's episode, I want to cover several Easter eggs across a variety of GameCube games. These are not all the Easter eggs across the GameCube library, but rather just a handful to share. So sit back, relax, and let's get cubed. The first game I want to cover is Mario Kart Double Dash. There are a few eggs to share for this game. The first is located in Luigi Circuit, which is the game's first track. When passing the Chain Chomp shortcut, stay to the right going up this ramp, and you will see the Rank A Mansion that's awarded in Luigi's Mansion. It's definitely a neat nod to the game that kicked off the GameCube's launch. Next up is Mushroom Bridge, in which there is a truck here that says Moo Moo Farm. This is a nod to the N64 Mario Kart track of the same name. This truck will randomly appear, so it's a matter of just driving until you see it. The next one is located in Dry Dry Desert. After passing the Piranha Plant Quicksand Pit, you will see signs up ahead. One of the signs says Super Mario Kart, referencing the very first Mario Kart game, and another sign says Sunshine Parts, referencing Super Mario Sunshine. Another Easter egg is found in Waluigi Stadium. If you can get close enough to the audience and see them, one of the characters is Donkey Kong Jr., who was originally the Donkey Kong playable in the Super Mario Kart SNES game. He's never appeared since as a playable character, so this is a nice nod to find. The last one I want to mention is when you boot up the game and Mario shouts Nintendo, hold the start button down. When holding it down, you'll notice he's now holding a fish hooked onto the pole as opposed to the traditional traffic light. The next game is Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. In this game, when playing on Peach's Castle Grounds course, aim your shot for the flower patch on the course. When the ball hits here, you will see Pikmin fly out of the flower patch and even hear their voices. This is actually pretty comical every time I've seen this happen. Next up is 1080 Avalanche. When pressing start at the title screen, the camera sways into the log cabin. If you look quick enough, you'll see the Wave Race Blue Storm logo poster on the wall here, which was Nintendo Software Technologies' previous game made. Additionally, one of the unlockables in the game is an 8-bit board, which is the NES controller and has the sound effects of the NES Mario games. I love this board just for this reason, and I wish we'd see more throwbacks like this. Next up is Burnout. When you change the console's date to February 19th of any year, then go to the special screen and start the credits, you will see the name of Mark Wesley flashing on the screen. This is actually the developer's birthday. Happy belated birthday, Mark Wesley. The next game is Second Sight. There are a few Easter eggs here I really want to point out. The first is in the Reliance level. Here, once you enter the facility, you open up this door here and you'll see an arcade cabinet called Earth Impact. Go up to it and press A, and you'll be able to play this fun little minigame. Additionally, in the Madness level, there's a room that contains a floppy disk on the top of a shelf. Using the telekinesis power, you pull it down and you can now backtrack briefly to the computer in the reception area. Click the disk icon on the desktop, and you can now play the X Space 92 game, which is a shoot 'em up. Now, you can even access these games whenever you want in the pause menu after getting them the first time. Lastly, in the preparation mission, once you've completed it, you can revisit the level and choose an additional checkpoint here, which has you going up against snipers, soldiers, and cameras. It's a nice little bonus to an already hidden gem of a game. Next up is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Now, here is a game with several Easter eggs, and this won't be all of them here. First up is the cruise ship level. There is a greenhouse section, and if you break every single glass pane, you will hear the current captain on the loudspeaker getting thrown overboard, and a new captain will take over and talk. It's pretty comical, and a neat feature for those who would actually think to break all these windows. You, yes, you skater down there. You have shattered the glass and set me free. From the fiery depths, I have returned the true Captain Jennings. That imposter will not be bothering us anymore. <laughs> uh, yes. For your diligence, I offer this bit of advice. Uh, uh, don't jump in the water. It's wet. Uh, thank you. 
Next up are the secret character features. Depending on who you use, certain pedestrians will act differently. When using Wolverine, people will get in a fighting stance. Use Darth Maul though, and pedestrians will float in the air with a force choke. Use Officer Dick, and people will be afraid to be arrested, while using Private Carrera will have pedestrians dancing. If you use Demoness, pedestrians will shrink to the ground. I love seeing these little details that they put into these secret characters. The next Easter egg I want to point out is in the level Suburbia. In the front of the haunted house here, there's a door that swivels open slightly and two red eyes appear through the doorway. If you jump in with any skater, the screen will say, ah, while going in with Demoness will say, welcome home, insinuating that this is actually her house. Another thing in Suburbia is that when you approach the Thin Man, he will dance with hearts floating around him. This may also insinuate that it could be a lover of his or they could be married. The last Easter egg I'm going to mention for this game is in Skater Island. When accessing the pirate ship section in Skater Island after grinding on this pirate flag, you can go onto the ship and look out in the distance to see a cruise ship. This is indeed the same cruise ship you'll skate on after beating the game. Next up is Tony Hawk's Underground. Much like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, there are numerous Easter eggs here and I'm only just touching base on a fraction of what's hidden here. First up is the Moscow level. There's a snowman in front of a communication building here. If you time your boneless ollie just right and hit its head off, the gap fatality will appear and you will see some blood splattering out of its neck. This is obviously a reference to Mortal Kombat. Additionally, there's another Easter egg in the Manhattan level. You can drive a car in this level, and if you run over the lady in the black dress, you will hear your board break up to 100 times. Not the greatest Easter egg, but it's one to note nonetheless. The next game is Medal of Honor Frontline. In the Nijmegen Bridge level, there's a point where you can climb a ladder on the bridge. When climbing up, there's a soldier floating in the air. Shoot his feet and he'll fall down to the ground. However, he'll never disappear like the other enemies. Now, go back down next to him, shoot his helmet off, and you'll see that he actually blinks and moves his mouth. This is a pretty bizarre one for sure, and one that I actually found fascinating. The next game is Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. In the laboratory after the Cyborg Ninja fight, go check Otacon's desk. You'll see that he has a GameCube and WaveBird controller on the desk, alongside the TV that's displaying the GameCube's console UI. Also in the laboratory are Mario and Yoshi figures. Shooting Yoshi will have his name said out loud, while shooting Mario plays the 1-up sound and replenishes your health. The next game is Shadow the Hedgehog. When playing any mission with the hero path, plug in a second controller and the second player can control the hero following you around. This is actually pretty cool as it's a throwback to Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Sega Genesis that utilized the same feature. Next up are some 007 games. The first being Agent Under Fire. In the cold reception level, at the start there's a piano. Go up to it and press the action button and the Bond theme will play on there. In the next installment, 007 Nightfire, go to the Deep Descent level. Shortly into the beginning, you'll see a sunken ship with the name Malprave. This is in reference to one of Aja Under Fire's villains. Now, going to 007 Everything or Nothing, in the Mardi Gras Mayhem level, while driving around, there will be a building with the name Phoenix. This was the main villainous corporation in 007 Nightfire. I like that both Nightfire and Everything or Nothing in particular had nods to their respective game's previous villains. Now, the last game I want to mention is Prince of Persia Sands of Time. Now, you'll need two controllers for this, one in the player 1 slot and one in the player 4 slot. When starting a new game, before walking into the curtain, hold the B button down on the controller in port 4. And now, press the following on the controller in port 1. A, B, Y, X, Y, A, B, X. Doing so will teleport you to the original Prince of Persia game, but with the Sands of Time graphics. It's only the first level here, but this is still such an amazing nod. When you reach the end of the level, you will enter a room with an image of all the developers behind the game, as well as some Prince of Persia branded beverages. 
This is still such an awesome Easter egg that I still rank as one of the best on the GameCube. And there you have it everyone. These are just a small handful of Easter eggs I wanted to highlight in this episode. There are still so many others, and maybe I'll be covering this in future episodes as an annual tradition for Easter. Did you ever come across any of these Easter eggs? Any that you all discovered that weren't mentioned here? Sound off in the comments below as I'd love to hear your thoughts. When I was figuring out a few ideas for upcoming topics, my wife was actually the one that pitched the idea of doing this video for Easter, so shout out to her on this great topic idea. I hope you all enjoy, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you.